It's another day in the sun. That song is stuck in my head. La La Land is now available in 4K UHD. This came out a few weeks ago. The kind folks at Lionsgate Home Video sent this over over a month ago, and I know I suck. I was supposed to review this last month, but I just got tied up with a bunch of stuff with, you know, conventions, my eye surgery, and in my own defense, Lionsgate sent this to me late. Um, so anyway, I now finally got a chance to watch this again on 4K UHD. When I first saw this movie in the movie theater, it was part of, it was part, it was part of the best AMC's best picture showcase. It was at the end of a very long day of really depressing, boring movies. So by the time this came on, I was like, okay, this is supposed to be the best movie of the year. Everyone's talking about it. Nominated for 15 Oscars. And I got to tell you, it fell flat for me when I when I first watched it. I was like, oh, my God, this is so boring. And I hated the opening number. And you all know me. I love musicals. I go to musicals all the time. Um, you know, I go to at least 15 musicals, 10, 15 music, 10, 12 musicals a year. So, you know me. I love a good musical. So I was kind of pumped for this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Ryan Gosling, but I love me some Emma Stone. Um, but... I was kind of bored silly by this movie when I first saw it, and I thought the last 20 minutes was unnecessary and really a letdown. I wish the last 20 minutes never happened. So that was my feeling when I first walked out of the theater. But the funny thing is, this movie stuck with me for a month or so. It just kind of seeped its way into me. I kept thinking about it, and I kept thinking about the music, and eventually I started really loving the music because it was just so darn catchy. I eventually ended up buying the soundtrack, and now I listen to it at least once every couple of weeks. Um, so there's something about this movie where when you first watch it, you're kind of like, eh, especially after all the hype surrounding it. But it does really stay with you. I mean, it's not a traditional love story. As a matter of fact, Ryan Gosling actually hates um, the, uh, Mia. I mean, the, uh, Mia played by Emma, Emma Stone. He, he thinks she's kind of like just a vapid actress wannabe. And, and he's the serious jazz musician. So they have nothing in common. But for some reason, in LA, it's L.A. And it's the movie. So they keep randomly running into each other. And there's some really cute, funny scenes in it. Like there's a moment where Ryan Gosling, the ser character, Sebastian, the serious jazz musician, is actually stuck in an 80s cover band at some fancy party. <laughs> And Emma Stone's at the party, and she looks at him, and he's wearing a complete 80s, cheesy 80s-style kind of Michael Jackson jacket, and it's just funny. Um, so I, the movie actually really does just suck you in and stays with you long after you see it. And, not, and I'm starting, I'm coming around on the ending. I still hate the ending. Because I would rather have an open-ended ending where you can imagine them being happy together as opposed to what they gave us. <laughs> um, which is where they tried to have like three different endings in, at one time. And it was just kind of a mess. But I love this movie. It, is, it looks gorgeous. And here I'm going to look down at my iPad again. Because director Damon Chazelle really directs the hell out of this movie. I mean, it is vibrant. It is colorful. Um... And much like, and I won't say it's energetic like a triple X, but there is something, there's a lot of energy and spunk to it. But at the same time, it's just a downer in terms of Sebastian's character. And I'm not a huge fan of jazz to begin with, but there's just something about this movie. And it's a love letter to L.A. I mean, they, I mean, if I was going to tell you the plot of it, it is a love letter to L.A. Emma Stone looks gorgeous in all her colorful dresses and on so that's the movie. The movie actually is an absolute A. Um, originally, I would have given it a C, but it's been a long time since a movie has really stuck with me as long as this one has. So I got to go with the popular opinion that this actually was the best movie of last year. It really was, and it got robbed at the Oscars. Um, but the 4K release, let's open it. let me open this up again. I don't know what you guys get out of this, but hey. I, I, I will play along. Let me open this up again. Um, again, doesn't matter if you see the code because I, um, I'm, 
I'm covering it anyway, but I already redeemed it. So it comes with the ultraviolet code. And I really love the fact that the disc have artwork on it because it's my new pet peeve seeing like just a black or blank disc when you're paying like $29 for these 4K releases. So good job Lionscape Home Video on giving us a nice consistent look and feel. So you had the Blu-ray, you had the 4K. Um, extra features include Another Day of Sun. Um, there's a featurette about how they shot the uh, freeway scene. There's a featurette about uh, the great party that they did. There's a featurette on where they talked to the pe to the creators, the people who actually wrote the music for the uh, show, for the movie. And then there's a, and then there's a, there's a talk with John Legend about his movie debut and some other stuff. So, oh, there's no commentary track on this that I could see. Um, well, my new peepers, but there's no commentary track. But the digital copy code is for. Ultraviolet, and once again, they screw you on the digital copy because all you get is the HDX version. You don't get the um, you don't get a 4K redemption code, which is really kind of just ticking me off. And I say this in every single video, but it's really ticking me off because if I buy this on 4K, then damn it, I want the UH, I want the uh, redemption code to be in 4K as well. Um, I wish they get that together, but it wouldn't even matter because it's voodoo. And ultraviolet, and you can't even like I can't even watch the 4K codes, 4K movies I have on ultraviolet now because ultraviolet only supports uh, two TV manufacturers where you can actually watch your 4K redemptions. Just a mess. Um, but anyway, on let's go to the picture. I don't, I can't tell you the technical details. I don't know how it was shot or anything, but I'm assuming it was shot on film. It has a filmic look to it, so I'm assuming it was filmed on 35 millimeter. Um, the colors on this. Are gorgeous. It's really nice. It's it's not as reference quality as you would think a movie like this would be, um, because I kind of spot checked this between the um, the Blu-ray version and the 4K version, and honestly, I don't really see much of a difference. There is definitely a difference, but it, but it's not like a wow. I gotta have it difference. I mean, there are some really nice scenes in this. Like, I thought the opening freeway scene in 4K HDR was a little muted. It is. I thought it looked about it the same as it did on the Blu-ray, but the middle portion, the the scene at the party, um, looks the HDR is popping all over the place. And when they're at the observatory, it's popping uh, all over the place and really colorful. And also the scene, the dance number they do after the party where they're looking for the car that looks really gorgeous in hdr so there's some good moments of hdr hdr pop in this nor and mostly in the in the really colorful vibrant scenes but the night the nighttime shots when they're in the clubs or anything i didn't really notice like inky blacks or any uh you know deep levels of blackness versus color coming in um, in those in those sequences, those moments kind of look drab, and they look drab. They look they look kind of drab on purpose, I think, because they look drab on the Blu-ray version as well. So those moments don't really pop as much as I would have wanted them to. But the scenes that are supposed to pop really do pop in the HDR. So I think the real star of this is the HDR, the 4K. The 4K uh, resolution really doesn't do much for this movie, but I think in some instances, the scenes that I described, the 4K really, the HDR really does shine. Um, and there's some moments where, like, where the light is spotlight on Emma Stone, and I don't know why every movie has this moment. Emma Stone movie has this moment where the light just kind of shines on her, off her hair and her face, and you see her cheekbones, and you see the the Emma Stone smile. There are a lot of movie. Every Emma Stone movie has that one signature shot, and you'll know it when you see it. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it, but it's really funny the way that works. I wonder if that's in a contract or every director is like, it's Emma Stone, and she has that perfect face, and let's just, and she has the freckles, and let's, let's just kind of light that up. Um, so on the HDR, it really shines and really does well. Um, I wouldn't say get this over the, um, over the standard Blu-ray version, but it's only like five dollars more because Lionsgate, I think, charges like twenty-five dollars for the UHD movies now. And if that's the case, you ha there's no reason not to buy the, not to buy the 4K UHD version really. And it also has Adobe Atmos soundtrack. The soundtrack sounds amazing. Again, I always have to say I don't have Adobe Atmos in my 
condo, I have a Sony HTX um, sound, you know, sound base, and it sounds really nice. It really fills the room. I can actually, and I know it's like fake, but you can actually hear stuff coming from behind you with this thing in, in the soundtrack, and, and I don't even have like real, like true life surround speakers. Really nice and beautiful and gorgeous and full sounding. So I love this movie. I, um, so the movie, I would give it A. The UHD, sure, I'll give the UHD. Well, I want to save A UHDs for like reference quality stuff. So I would have to say this is a B B plus uh, release, um, 4K release. Um, but yeah, it's it's solid. It's very solid, reasonably priced, especially compared to the Blu-ray version. So yeah, if you have a 4K TV, there's absolutely no reason not to get this. It's just not a movie that people are going to go, "Wow, that is a 4K HDR movie you're watching." No, it's not going to do that. But you will enjoy this movie and the experience for 4K.